Peoples, welcome to the Stoke Bloke Show. I'm Barton Lynch. We're coming to you from the Pipeline Studios, courtesy of a New Earth Project. My cohort here, Peter P.K. King. You. Thank you for everything and a thank you to the New Earth Project for supporting the Stoke Bloke Show and getting us on the air. It's been an exciting week, P.K. We have been here most days, every day, for quite some time now as the backdoor shootout has been running been tough conditions gnarly gnarly ocean out there yeah what an incredible contest huh? very like has a local feel to it with the local pipeline chargers and then of course the international crew the brazil team the peru team the japan team but these are people all dedicated to pipe i notice you're not in our yard you're next door why is that that is because i am a judge at this event this judge ye not lest ye be judged yes and i have been judged for a very long time <laughs> and in recent times they've been judging this book by its cover and I've been getting mistaken for a homeless person on multiple occasions but I suppose when you look like this that's what comes with the territory but we have we've been at the backdoor shootout Dahui backdoor shootout and I suppose it is Dahui that brings that cultural community element and respect to this event when you see the Japanese team, the Peruvian teams and those teams that come from elsewhere to take part in this event, they come with a warrior spirit. They you, understand they can't come to the Dahui event and chick it out of ways, man. you got to go. This isn't like, okay, so let's just say the Vans Pipe Masters or even the ASP, WSL, end of the year, Pipeline Pro or whatever those events are. Some people in those events don't want to go on set waves. They're just kind of... They're on tour and they have to ride pipeline or paddle out. But yeah. this event, people, you, you'd have to hold these people back from going over the ledge on a big one. And if you don't, you won't get invited back. That's right. So they understand that that this is, you know, this is a being a part of this event is almost like paying your respects to the local community, the OGs, the originals, who, in a lot of ways, have been painted at times through history as the bad guys. But we understand, as we live in the world that we live in today, that not always are the bad guys the bad guys. Mm. Sometimes the bad guys have been painted the bad guys, but they're actually the good guys. How many contests have you surfed in in your life? Well, a thousand. Yeah, right? I, oh, hundreds and hundreds. Have and you ever hundreds. have you ever met a contest director like Eddie Rothman? I have never <laughs> ever met a contest director like Eddie Rothman. Does we, anyone care more about their event than Eddie Rothman? Yeah, he's across all the details, all the little details, all the parts that, are, that come together to make this the great cultural celebration that it is. He is across all of them. His team's across all of them. They've been doing it as long as they have. What, 96, I think, I believe it started? And um, they're ticking all the boxes and dotting all the I's, as they say. And uh, Eddie's always there just making sure everything's going smooth. We had him on the mic as the beach announcer on the fire the other day. Uh, day before yesterday, and uh, it was quite a treat. He is one funny bugger, and I'll tell you. You know, the public doesn't get to see or hear from Eddie enough, I think. Well, and, and I don't know that he wants to be in that position, mm. you know. He doesn't necessarily but he look shines for the long this event. Yeah, yeah, he shines at this event. To who he shine at this event, the performances shine at this event, and it's at the best venue to shine that there is in the world. There's nothing like Pipeline, is there? First day in the morning, we ran the SUP, the longboard and the body surf. So they bring all of those different disciplines into the event and involve those people. It was, would we call it five to seven that morning, perhaps? You know, four to six, five to seven, You've something in that range. You've been living here too long, Barton. It's been <laughs> six to eight. Okay. It was six to eight. It's hard to know, <laughs> mate, isn't it? You know, when you see 30-foot waves every other day, it's kind of, when it gets down to six to eight, you're like, oh, it's small today, you know. Um, but then in that afternoon, we went into the main round of the event. And the teams, in this event, people surf as a team. So you go into the water. There's eight teams of six surfers, five that go into the water at a time, and they go out there together. They wear no jerseys, no singlets, no promotion. I mean, they could have the hooey, Dahui on everyone. But they, they just go, no, you guys go out surfing whatever it is you want to surf in. And that's so a there's... testament to Eddie Rothman's idea where this is a benefit for the surfers. Yeah. And then and that's the idea with the rounds. So this event, when they go out to surf in a heat, they know they're going to surf at least four rounds. And we've done 
two and a half days. We've got one and a half days left. We've done four rounds and the longboard, sup and bodyboard. So we've got a day and a half left, which gives us room for three more rounds. So potentially all of the surfers have had seven surfs, seven heats at Pipeline. And in that format, it comes out in the wash. The tough job for me, mate. So you're up there judging. Yeah, we're up there judging. And what we have to do is make sure that that first wave on day one and that last wave on day six or whatever it is. Has a proper relationship. Yeah, they, they connect and you can see reasons why it all matches and you've had these hundreds and thousands of rides ridden and we as judges have got to put that jigsaw puzzle together. Helping me out up there is Joel Centeo, Flynn Novak, Love Hodel and myself. And so that's a four-man panel where Eddie picks those people, I help him, and we create this panel of the best surfers we can get. People who know what they're judging, right. have done what they're judging. And they and, know this event too. Yeah, and they know the people, they know the event, they know the whole thing. And so it's a really, we have, I don't think, I think it's fair to say that a judging panel has never had so much fun as what we've had this week. Really? We've had Uncle Eddie up there behind us cracking jokes all day, telling stories, and, and through the lulls, because there have been some lulls, there have been some heats where I remember... The Florence brothers in their team, they, they, they got one wave in that heat. John got one wave that was like a two. So there's been heats through the crazy, stormy, wild conditions we've had on day two where people found it really difficult to get waves and to select them was, was the toughest deal ever. And we had some of the best pipeline surfers of all time. Jamie O has been in good form. Yep, he's on um, Team New Earth Project as a replacement for Kelly Slater whose hip was bothering him and he didn't feel like surfing so soon he might he may surf that last day day and a half right but um yeah we went with uh jamie o'brien somehow wasn't on the team and i mean you have kelly slater who are you going to replace him with and i, I think we might have upgraded <laughs> i think actually well with jamie o'brien at pipeline in those inconsistent conditions i remember watching kelly for so many years and he would find these diamonds in the rough jamie same thing huh? Jay, those guys are incredible their 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 connection to this wave and understanding of it two of obviously the best of all time both those guys will be remembered alongside jerry lopez rory russell names like that you know that go down in history so it's been a good event. It's been wild. Uncle Eddie saw this forecast, and today, peoples, it is raining. Quite cold, look, long sleeves here in Hawaii. It's quite cold by our standards. It's stormy. The roads are flooded, and we saw this weather pattern coming. There's going to be onshore winds for a few days as well. So we get some big swell, but with onshore winds, Uncle Eddie saw this coming and went, okay, we better get some rounds done while we can. And we punched out those first three days and ran every day and got as much done as we, like, ringed it as, as, as best we possibly could to get to the point where even if we didn't get another day in the window that was clean and good, we've done enough to run an event and, and conclude an event. Had the four rounds. At the moment, Billy Kemper is up there in the lead. He got an incredible right-hander on day one because some heats just... The highlight reel of this event, of every day of the event, is, in, is amazing. Stunning. Stunning. <laughs> incredible surfing but to sit through the whole day you realize that it took a lot of time to get to the highlight reel and there were a lot of lulls a lot of heats that didn't get waves and some that did so there's that kind of luck of the draw but when you've surfed six or seven times you figure that all of that comes out in the wash in a normal contest pk when you go into the water all you've got to do is beat the other guy so if we're at a a, a, a normal event right. where you've got, say, four guys out and two advanced. You catch the two best waves, you've got a good chance of making it. And even you look at third and fourth and you go, well, they haven't had, I only need a three and a two. Or, you know, you might only need a couple small scores to get through that heat and advance to the next round. In this event, the difference is those twos, those threes, those sixes, anything really under an eight. It looked like under a seven on that first couple of days. We're like, seven's a countable score at that point. Um, but anything under an eight really is not even worth catching. And so you see surfers be more selective because they understand it's going to be on their best three or four rides. Depending on how many, rides, how many rounds we do, they then decide how many rides the overall champions decided on. And so it's, it, it forces people to be selective and it's twos or tens because they're taking off so deep and charging so hard and they're all trying to get that eight plus ten whatever ride. Right. And if... if there's no use getting the sixes. In a normal heat, the sixes will get you through. So we see a different approach to surfing a heat. We see a different standard and quality of surfing because they're not trying to get through. 
They're trying to get waves that will count in the end and help them win the event. And they're eights or better. And so you don't, might, might not see as many rides and you see people being more selective. But when it happens, it happens with such gusto and it's so exciting and it's so radical. And we've seen some, some radical wipeouts already, PK. What about the New Earth Project team member, uh, Kai Lenny's? Day one in the Ooh. SUP... Uh, yeah, there was some confusion about whether Kai was even supposed to surf that round. Anyway, he went out. Uh, he caught a wave. W had an awkward wipeout. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, hit his head with a helmet. First time he'd ever worn a helmet. His wife told him, please wear a helmet. And he cracked the helmet. So it he hit the reef, cracked his helmet, saved his life. But he got knocked and he got concussed. So he was out of the event for us. We had <coughs> Shaden Picaro yep. as a <clears throat> in the wings as a backup. So... Yeah, we still have a full team. Carissa Moore, Jamie O'Brien, Shane Picaro, Matahi Drole, and Koa Smith. Yeah. But uh, that first day, there was injuries right away. I've seen with some of the team riders of, of all teams where they just want to surf. So you end up going the fours and the fives and the sixes. Yeah. And, and it's just so you can catch some waves and surf because you don't want to go out there in a heat and not get a wave. But in the end, a lot of those rides don't count. Um, I feel like Koa has been a little bit... He's had some good ride. He's such... What a talent he is. Yeah, Koa he's Smith's a superstar outrageous. at Pipe, Koa Smith. Oh, he loves to outrageous. go right, too, you know, backside, yeah. which, you know... Have you ever gone right at Pipe? I've, I've gone right. Just I've, accidentally? Yeah, well, you know, here's a good story. <laughs> 1987, it's the final of the Pipe Masters. It was Tom Carroll, Derek Ho, Ronnie Burns, oh my and God. Barton Lynch. <laughs> and at that point in time... I, I, when I made that final, I was like, we are. I feel like I, we are the top four surfers in the world at Pipeline at this point in time. And it was kind of like the four of us. I felt like I may be the fourth. You know what I mean? With Tom and Derek and Ronnie Burns, who was just, you know, rest in peace, was one of the greatest surfers I ever saw. And one of the biggest influences on my style. The way Ronnie used to flare the arms and fly like a bird on a wave was just a beautiful thing. So we make that final. Um... I'm dropping in on one and I get to the bottom, like I'm going down the face and I look and Tommy Carroll comes down the face on me. And all I have to do is chink it to the left. And he gets interference. He gets an interference. And, so, and it's so unlike me, I don't know where this came from. But I dropped down and went, oh, what do I do? And I had this, you know, it's split seconds, but this moment of confusion in my mind, like do I go left or, and I went right. And I let Tommy off the hook and I went the right, it wasn't a score. In the end, Tommy won that final. And I could have got him on an interference in that one, but I did go right. Mm. So um, that is the, the holy grail of the massive big scores. It was goofies on lefts, then it went to naturals on rights, mm. then it went to naturals on lefts, and the next step is the goofies on the right. Yep. And if, if we... Gabriel Medina is incredible at, on the, at the back door. Yep. Um, as you said, Koa, Shaden, both those guys in your team. There's goofies that are good there, but it is perhaps the hardest. Pretty uh, rare. It's rare, and it's the hardest way to surf pipe. I can think of, like, maybe Koa Rothman, and then um, I'm out of names for right now. Back in the day, Braden Diaz would go right on some. Marvin Foster. Marvin it was, Foster, it was there, but still. Very you, rare, though. And you were looking for the shorter, peakier ones. You weren't looking for the super long runners down through Aints because that. Yeah. So hard to pump on the backhand and make that, but that's where. Oh, let me throw out one more name Balaram. Balaram. Unbelievable backside out there. Yeah, and um, unbelievable and all wants, around. But wants it. Yeah, yeah. so just, I'm just saying it's a short list of. Of goofy footers that go right at backdoor on meaty, big, scary waves, and that's where the biggest points are going to come from I in agree. the future, because that is the, the the that last sort of uncharted part, yeah. you know, of of surfing pipeline, and it's a tough one to, to surf the backdoor and pump the board up and down to make those sections on your backhand, because you can't really be holding the rail to do it. You need to kind of at some point let go of that rail and pump the board from the backhand, and there's not many surfers ca that capable <laughs> and that talented to do that. So but you said Billy got a right? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Billy got an amazing right on that first afternoon. We gave it an eight because we were judging out a ten and we go, well, we've got three more days of an event to go. We can, this is one of the great things about the shootout. You can change the score. If we get to it, well, that too. We, and, and first is we talk. As judges, we sit there and discuss it together and talk about what we see. We never, ever come in more than a point apart, ever. 
It's always with it, you know, someone might go four, five, someone might go five, five, and we figure it out from there. We never come in more than a point apart, which is, is great. The fact that we're allowed to talk is fantastic. And because we might go, you got a five, you got a five. I feel like it's just below that. I'm going to go four, five, brings it in at four, eight, three. Right. It and changes the whole number, doesn't it? And we it? put, yeah, so we can manage where we put our scores on how we feel to come up with the right end result once it's divided by the three of us. And that's, a, that's something that's very different. And then the fact that we can allocate a 10, as we did to Billy Kemper again, that right um, was maybe... The only way, to, one of the ways to date where people go, oh, was that underscored? Did you guys go too low on that? If you're out of 12, we go, no, we're not out of 12. We're out of 10 is what we are. And we've got three days of competition to go. And if we go 10 right now for that, and it gets 10 to 12 feet, and all of this is going on, then the scale gets wonky. So um, Billy uh, got the eight for the right. It was an amazing right. Which, and, and eight was the highest, you know, a really high score for the day. Second highest to Jamie O's nine. On a, on a crazy left. Um, and then, then he got this unbelievable left um, on the last day in the after, second day in the afternoon when it cleaned up for those last couple of heats and, and we gave him a 10. It was an incredible left-hander. He got the 10. But in our back pocket for the remainder is that we can go to 11. We can go 10, 5, 11, 11, 5, 12, depending. If there's a better wave. If there's better than the 10 you've already allocated, our scale is kind of endless. Even if we got to 12 and someone, we, we go, oh, that was better than the 12. We go 12.5. Right. So, and we don't, we don't use that and judge out of 12. We judge out of 10 and keep the 11 and 12 in the back pocket for when you may need it to acknowledge something that's better than what's already been done. You know? So that, that in itself is another part of the format that's, that's really powerful. I love that. Second place right now is Seth Moniz, and he got his two rights back to back, like within two, two or three minutes. It was a little McFlurry, as yeah. they call him. He got the first <laughs> one was an 817, and it was the best wave of the contest to that point. Uh, his, his knowledge, his thoroughbred, his bloodline, all of that in his DNA enabled him to find two. As you said, he paddled back out off the 817 and got another one that was better, bigger, deeper, went to an 883. And so he got those two opening scores on day one that really put him into the lead. So him and Billy right there, Jamie O's. Jamie's in third. Yeah, nine. And he's been taking. A bunch of seven. <clears throat> you know how you would say, like, when you're coaching someone, hey, I need you to take this five and turn it into a seven. Mm -hmm. Or you take a three and turn it into a five. He's taking closeouts and making them into nines. He was taking waves that weren't even rideable. Yes. But the whole crowd would just, always would let those waves go. He was moving around in a frenzy, frothing to find stuff, and he made some crazy stuff happen. Yeah. No hands. That one he said yeah. he was, you know, took a cue from Slater and took the took hands, the hands off. off. Yeah, yeah, that was a beauty. He had like three, three in that seven plus range. Then he got a nine, a low nine, and so he's in a strong position as well. And and at this point, with three rounds potentially left, anyone can still win. You could have not had a score yet and go out in a heat like Seth did in a couple of minutes, back them up and get two. You know, go out in your next heat, get one or two, and you, you, you could win the event. So do so they score top three waves or top four, or does it depend on how many rounds have been served? Yeah, depends on how many rounds we end up being able to, ru to run. You know, right. we've got four out of the way. We've done enough now. Four's our minimum. We've done enough to finish the event. If the weather just went crap and we never got another day, there's enough there to, to finish the event. The, the surfing's been incredible and the vibe's been, the stoke's been high. But... The, the goal is to run, we've got a day and a half, is to run three more rounds. And with that, anyone could come from anywhere. You could come from last place and still win the event at this point in time. That's one of the things that keeps it interesting too because say it's Kelly Slater and he got knocked out in his first round, you never see him again. Well, he hasn't surfed yet because... Uh, He's hip. His, his, you know, he was too hip for us. Too hip. So hippy, now, hippy he, shape. let's say he shows up in two days and the event goes on the 15th or the 16th and he gets three great waves that day. Could that, ha yeah, there's a potential that oh, he will get here? It could 100% happen, yeah. Oh, don't let him know that little vision. He would manifest that thing into some kind of reality somehow. He's such yeah, a talent. We should let him know. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about Carissa. Yes. Carissa and Moana are the only girls in this event, the only girls that really want to be in it, it seems like, that mm -hmm. really hustled and found their way onto a team and are excited to serve. Carissa, one day, it was so big... And she kind of knew. We all knew there was not going to be any real barrels in that heat. And I don't even think there was one that scored. But she just wanted to paddle out. So she texted the whole team. And she said, hey, guys, I want to paddle out with you guys just for the practice of paddling out. 
and everyone wrote on our group text. It was so cute. Everyone's like, you got this, Riss. And, yes. and Kelly chimed in because he's on our group text because he's on our team. He's just not here. Yeah. Um, he was like coaching from Florida. You know, he's like, oh, you'll be fine. Just sit in the shoulder and you might even get a sick one. And then Jamie was helping her out. Yeah. And she was so stoked just to paddle out on a really big day and to make the paddle out. She, of course, has the Pipeline Pro coming up and she wants to practice basically for that. And there is no practicing anywhere but here. No. And those days, how's getting through the sandbank? Just through the sandbar, just getting out the back. There's days when to get out of pipelines quite easy because of the way things are structured. The sandbar from Ehukai this year is over more mm. in front of the pipeline houses and the trail down to the beach. And we saw some crazy, crazy big dumping sand gurgling waves on that. And we even saw the jet skis. We saw the, the, the water oh, yeah. patrol, which is the, the, you know, the greatest water patrol in the world. It, we're at that point where it's second generation Terrier Hui sons in there. You know, we've got these second generation watermen, Brian Kialana's boys in there too, coming through and, and taking on those roles and working in that space that their parents did. They are the best water patrol in the world. But even in those conditions, it was so gnarly that we even saw our the war, great Hawaiian Water Patrol get into some trouble too. Yeah, Brandon Ski went upside down. It's going to happen when that's your rescue zone is in the impact zone. Oh, so and gnarly. that's where you got to be. But they're ready for it. And the way he manhandled <laughs> that thing, turned it back over. It was, I mean, it was textbook. That will be viewed in safety classes for years. That thing went viral as it should have all over the internet. The news picked it up. It's gone all around the world. So everyone has pretty much seen it. But yeah, he, he righted that ski Right there, got on, hung on. And hung on, body surfed thing. it. I mean, that was pure cowboy it in the was. water, right? Hanging on to the bull for the yeah. last minutes, got it to the inside, got it started. There was like comments oh. from, from girls like, oh my gosh, I want one of those and I'm not talking about the jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, it was a manly effort. Yeah, it was like Superman, Hawaiian, Aqua Cowboy stuff. It sure right was, mate. It was incredible. So all sorts of fireworks, all sorts of action. Yeah. Great surfing. The format's amazing. The cultural elements of it. The opening ceremony was was beautiful. We we it's, both got to share the, in that. It's one of the best. I don't know if you call it a protocol or everything they do. It it just lends so much weight and lets you know there's a lot at stake. For the people putting this on, Dahui, that club, what it really means to them uh, to give back to the community. And yes, the opening ceremony was intense. Moana, one mm -hmm. of the surfers in the event, yes. danced hula in the opening ceremony. And what about the good fellows or the... the I, th I think they the, call the, them the gentlemen. The gentlemen. They the royalty. Yeah. Descendants Chicken of skin. literal roy Hawaiian royalty. They're present with their capes on, sitting there watching things go down. And you, you looking at those gentlemen, there wasn't a lot of emotion in their faces and stuff, but you knew that it, it that resonates all the way back to the very beginning of, of our sport, our culture, to, to the royalty of Hawaiian culture. It's, it's, yeah, it's a powerful thing. Opening ceremony, end of the event, and then we've still got time to go. So already it's been great, um, and we're hoping the best is yet to come. The final day, the 16th, looks pretty good, Eddie thinks. Um, wow. But we're just going to keep monitoring it day by day and um, you know, hopefully get to run three more rounds, PK, and... Uh, be a good thing. We are going to have the GOAT, Kelly Slater, joining us here in the Pipeline mm. Studios when he arrives. He's agreed to do the podcast with us, so I'm very excited to delve into the history that he and I have and the things that you and I know about him over the years. So that's exciting. We're looking at having Clark Little on the podcast, Larry Berlman. We've got a lot of great names coming up, but that's it for today. That's it for the Backdoor Shootout mid-halfway report, really, you'd call it, the halfway show. Perhaps three more rounds to go. Big thanks to the Hui. Big thanks to you, PK, and a New Earth Project, everyone who's a part of that event. And a big thanks to you at home for watching the podcast, sharing the stoke with us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. We're live.